actually goes live, one of you with a computer that can yeah, check the Facebook. Yeah. Awesome. Well, then I'll go back to sharing my screen once it jumps over. All right, looks like that's on. Back to my Zoom. Yeah. You're live now. All right, and I'm going to start recording. Good morning, folks. Oh, look, I'm about a minute ahead of schedule. Try doing that this way. Let's see if I can get to share my screen, and we'll be ready to start. Oh, I guess it's that one. Just gotta move that out of the way for a second and go to oh, we'll see if somebody pops in there. All right, and I've got a few live bodies in this room, so we get to have fun asking them questions. Are you guys ready for 2024? So ready. So ready. There we go. I love it. I love it. Well, let's see if we can make sure to get you ready to go. So today we're going to go over some biz. Well, let's just ask you again. Are you ready for 2024? <laughs> uh, <so ready. laughs> I had fun last night. Thank you. So ready. All right. See, I should have done it. So ready. So I know, so I've got some experienced agents here. I hope I have some newer agents online or coming to join us here shortly. They'll find out later that they're behind here if they're not ready to go. But we just want to make sure you've got everything set up. And, you know, we've been running into some interesting things here in the office with PLLCs and LLCs. So I'm just going to take a little tally. Any of you here have a PLLC? PLLC. Two PLLCs, nope. So two PLLCs and and no, I, honestly, I don't have one either. Probably should set one up, but um, we're gonna also talk about email signatures, your voicemail message recording. How about your website? A CRM or database, are, are those up and running for you? And lastly, do you have a business plan for 2024? Now, this is not going to be a business plan meeting. We're just going to talk about the overview of a lot of these things. So let's get started. PLLCs and LLCs, uh, that's a personal liability, limited liability corporation or uh, LLC. You can have your accountant. Let's see if I can move that out of the way for my folks here. This is kind of in the way. Uh, let's go to the side. Can I do that Used to be able to move it over. Now yeah, we'll do this. I don't know where it disappeared to. Uh oh. All right. So an accountant or CPA can set those up. A lawyer can set it up. Technically, you can set it up if you have enough patience to learn the laws. Um, it talks about a PLLC here. It's organized under Arizona Revised Statutes. That's what we operate under all the time, right? So it is an actual thing in Arizona that will keep you whoops, um, going. Let me make sure I get this go there. Um, so it's really important that you understand that this is specific licensing. It's uh, under the Arizona Revised Statutes. Uh, and when you are a realtor and getting a PLLC, um, guess what? There are some additional rules that may apply. And so if you look at the Arizona Department of Real Estate, this is what they have in there. These click here things, I can't click on this because this is a slide, but if you go to the Arizona Department of Real Estate, you will find these exact four tabs uh, or messages that will be there. And if you notice the third one down says there are very specific requirements that must be met before establishing a PC or PLLC and submitting your license application, because of course you must register with the Department of Real Estate. I don't know how to move this. There we go. Hold on, folks. This is something on my screen. You guys don't know that you can see over there, but I'm just trying to get that out of the way someplace. Usually it will go to the side and it is not letting me do that. Oh, well, 
All right, so you must register with the Department of Real Estate. Does anybody know what you have to do after you register with the Department of Real Estate? It's been a little while. Uh, Craig, do you remember? Yeah, no? Yeah, I, did, I did mine back. <laughs> a long time ago. Seven years ago. I had to supply information. I remember I had to go open the account house. And so I had a bunch of information that I had to you know, have ready. But it's been a while. <laughs> All right, hold on one second. I'm going to check something here on my screen. You have to, whoop, hold on, let me back that up. You have to redo your W-9 with oh, yeah. Realty One Group, yeah. well, right? Yeah. Because your checks go out to how your W-9 is written and recorded here in our office, saved here. So when you redo something at the Arizona Department of Real Estate and change your name, you need to do something here to make sure that we have the correct W-9 for you. I am trying to make sure that I've got the correct audio. The other day I did not have, oh, we do, okay. All right, I'm gonna try one more time to make this go to the side. Well, that was weird. Where did my screen go? Anybody know where my screen went to? No, nope. just lost my screen, okay. Okay, so we're gonna go on and we'll just play with, Let's try and put that down here. Kind of weird. Okay. Doesn't want to work. Email signatures. Does everyone in this room have an email signature? Yep, yep, yep. So online, let's make sure you know that you have a couple of options. Realty One Group provides you some templates for this if you don't want to do your own. You go to one login. And then you can go to the One Design Creative Studios, search for the Realty One Group digital templates, and they look like this. So this is one of the options available. And there are a whole bunch of them if you go to the Creative Studios to look at this. Now, the only thing is that unless you set up the HTML link, if somebody clicks on that, it doesn't go anywhere. So please make sure you set up those links to be able to have somebody click on your signature and be able to follow you or, or email you. Um, sometimes you can have it click to a phone number so it'll dial directly over to you. Now, another option, which you probably see when you see my email, you go to one login, then you go to one branding. At the top of one branding, across the very top, there is something over on the very right-hand side that says essentials. If you scroll down from there, you'll see the email signature and you can follow the directions to do something like this and edit that to become your own. Now, for those who've been following us, uh, we now have about 19,000 professionals and it is updated when you actually fill it in. It will give you whatever the current set of numbers on the bottom here. Those are all updated though. These are very, very old, but they have not changed their little slide in the system. And to give you an idea of that, I'm going to jump over. So let me see if I escape that screen. I am going to jump over to my one login and show these to you. So one branding, if you go here, <laughs> it's not going to let me show you. Ah, that's funny. Um, it won't do it on my small screen. And I have another screen here, but it's funny because it's not showing up there either because it's mimicking my bottom screen. Well, that's a bummer. All right, let me go back to one login. Let's see if the Creative Studio will open. If it doesn't, then we can't show that to you. Okay, so here you can go to, what did I say? The digital templates and scroll down to email signatures. And so they have a lot of different varieties here. What you would do is click Create Design and then you can show folks, or you can connect that to your email. It's going to tell you how to copy and paste it into your Gmail or Outlook or whatever uh, email signature pro or whatever email system you're in to set it up as your signature. So let me go back to this and we'll go back to our slideshow. Let's see if it takes me back to where I was, of course. Oh, it did. 
All right. So next, we have voicemail recording. How many of you have a voicemail recording that says you're a realtor? <gasps> uh, kind of, I maybe. It's wild when I call, um, you know, if I'm trying to move a house or something and, and call, and it's like you get an automated thing, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I, I'm shocked. <laughs> I am shocked. So what do you think should be on there? Hi, this is so and so from Realty One Group. Please leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Okay, Something so like your name, Realty One Group at least, maybe the hours or the hours of your operation or whether or not they should I text you. I would, well, you can do that. So if you can want to reach me sooner, you can text me at this number. Yeah. Um, what other things could be on there? I've heard all sorts of different go, things. I go too long. Don't go too long, okay? Don't listen to a long, nobody wants to listen to a long message. I, I agree with that. But you should have at the very minimum your name and Realty One Definitely. Group if, if you're an agent with Realty One Group. We've got some folks from Rock Title. I'm guessing that if their cell phone is being used for business, do you guys have your company name on there? Yeah. I do. <laughs> they both are going, uh-huh, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's I'm check that later. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna double check she's got the right thing. Right. And and this is a big problem when you move companies, right? Because I have seen email signatures for people when they've switched companies that still have their old company on there right. or voicemail messages that have not been updated. So please check to make sure your voicemail is ready for 2024 uh, and ready to go with your company information in your name. I do like the text. If you respond to text, if you do not text, please do not put that on your voice <laughs> message because people are expecting you will then respond to that. All right, let's see what's next. Website. Hmm. How many of you have a website set up? Uh, uh, wait a minute, really? Oh, I've got two experience stations and we offer a free website, folks. It's free. Oh, it's not, I don't think mine for what it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay. So one login, you can go to one suite. For those that don't know, you can register set it up and it is free. Now that I will tell you a tip, this is not in my notes here, but if you have your own personal domain, I recommend you go ahead and pay for the professional services to link that domain to our um, free uh, website service. And the only reason for that is there's something in the background. If you try it yourself, you don't seem to get everything aligned correctly. So I just recommend it's like $30. It's not a huge expense. So I recommend you do that. Um, this is what the website editor looks like. Hopefully people online are not can't figure out where to put my little bar here. That's in the way. Um, so you do have the little website editor link. Then the other thing is your CRM, CRM or your database. Um, so that is also offered free by Realty One Group. And I'm going to show you it's the same place. It's not funny under one login. All these things are quite handy. Again, under one suite setup. You can transfer. So if you have an existing database, you can take that database to a CSV file. You can transfer those names in there and you can begin to use it. Whoops. And whoops, it should give me another thing. It looks very similar. It's a little box that says contacts and leads. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with either of those, I don't know why that's doing that. We actually have access to a lot of training through Rock University. Um, move that out of the way again. If you've been following in any of my monthly meetings, we have Rock University has a training schedule and to become a VIP member. I recommend you do both, but I'm going to show you. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that training schedule. If you look at the first things that it has at the very top of that training schedule, it has our Realty One Group orientation. And then look, Realty One Group, one sweet training. This is the training on setting up your website and your CRM, and they do this each and every month. Let's see, we still have, oh, these are the other trainings that are going on. These happened last month and this month. Uh, just wanted to bring up the note of this 2024 success blueprint with Debbie DeGroat. I'll show you that in just a second. 
But these are the Realty One Group One Suite trainings. Look, <clears throat> even today, there's a training on property searches and listing alerts at one o'clock today. Every Monday at one o'clock, there is something on this One Suite training. You can get this every Monday. You register one o'clock on Mondays. Help yourself out here. It shows you how to do the CRM, the website editor, this property searches, client tracking, market reports. It's all there. It's all for free. They will train you. So, and these are these are Zoom, but they are live. I mean, it, it, I think somebody's teaching the class Justin, live. Justin, Just Justin. Justin's teaching them live, but they're on Zoom, which is why you register because he's not upstairs here. Someday we'll get him back up here to teach a class, but. For now, most of these are done because he's all over the place between Nevada and California. So, but we've still got more. And wow, I did that really quickly though. We're going to go, um, actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, let's see if we can do this though. Let's go back over to the one con login. I'm going to see if we can do the Rock University. Let's hope that'll open up. So here on the very front page is that training schedule I showed you. They have not loaded the January. You would see exactly what I showed you before. So let me go ahead and go here into become a VIP member. If you have not done this, please put your information in here. Click sign up. Now I'm going to try to log in and I have a feeling it's not going to log me in. That's what I was afraid of because last night it did not like me. And so I changed my password. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, oh I remembered what I did last night. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, so you wanna go into your access here. <clears throat> there are a lot of things in here, but I wanna point out your training videos. These are going to talk about a lot of the stuff I was just dealing with. Oh, I have a feeling there's going to be sound here. Hold on. Let's make sure my sound is down. Because um, <clears throat> usually it comes out with a rocking music that blares all over the place. So there are a lot of videos here. You can click on videos rather than home. <clears throat> to see the different things available. Some of these are recent. Um, some of them are further along ago. <clears throat> I love this. This is an hour video about what you need to do to finish the year strong and plan for a strong, I think it's for a strong 2024. But um, there are a ton of different videos in here. Uh, when you go to the videos, though, it's not the same as those training sessions. The training sessions are very specific for the things we have on our um one or our one login for our different programs for the one suite and everything those training programs are the ones right here whoops so I have to go back show me that so um I think it goes under monthly learning assets oh no I guess you have to go back up to the front but um or way sorry not meaning to go down. Here's the one suite trainings. Go down to the bottom. And it's again going to show you this. Now you can also browse existing videos specific to that one suite training. So if you can't wait for the next Monday class that's going to talk about the one suite, you can come in here and look at how to set up your CRM, right? How to create your profile and website editor how to add a HomeBot widget to your website. All these things are, there are 10 videos here. You want to set up your website and your CRM. You do not have to wait for anything. The videos are there. Justin's already done them for you. It's free, folks. For any Realty One agent, why you don't have your own website, I don't know. We've given it to you. Please take advantage of this. And if you have questions, you can probably send them in and they'll they'll answer you. But a lot of this stuff is already on here. And there are these tools. These are specific for Realty One Group. So don't leave those just sitting there and not doing anything. If you're brand new to the company, the one orientation, if you can't make the live orientations, there's part one and part two that talk about SkySlope and SkySlope forms, which is your documents. And then your other login, one login tools, which is a little bit of what I was going over. 
I'm going to go back up here just for a second. As we start to talk about what to do for 2024, you know, as you put together your business plan, what are you including with your marketing plan? And somebody here just tell me what is one thing they plan to do marketing wise in 2024 that may be different than what they've done in the past. Anybody want to share? Or the same as what they've done in the past? <laughs> I don't know if this is considered marketing, but I mean, I guess in a way I'm going to be reaching out to more um, canceled and expired listings. So you're going to do, okay, so that is a part of a business plan to, uh, to reach out and touch canceled and expired. Voss, anything that you are doing differently this year? FaceTime and uh, including FaceTime. FaceTime, okay. And uh, video uh, Zoom, as if it was in person appointments. It's been very successful. People are happy. People are now very, very used to that. And that's what we're doing today, right now. That's the new, that's the new in person. Here, here's a question How many of you have presented a purchase contract or a listing contract with a client on Zoom? How many of you have used Zoom to do that? Really, just one of you? Do you normally do it in person then? Person? Mm -hmm. Yes. Person, well, person. Absolutely. Okay. Well, sometimes your client can't get here. I've had clients from out of state, right? Client out of state, you, you don't have that option, but Zoom is there. Um, Zoom, if you do not have a professional account, you can go about 45 minutes and you won't get knocked off. After 45 minutes, you're going to get knocked off. Not sure it makes sense to do that for the low cost of a Zoom professional um, program, I'd probably recommend you go ahead and, and get a professional account, uh, which gives you unlimited timing uh, to be on with the clients. Uh, I have happen to love using Zoom, probably why I'm comfortable doing this, but I really do enjoy using Zoom with clients. Um, I think it's a great way to connect. One of the benefits of going over a contract on Zoom is you can control the document and you can move it and make sure they're following along. Now, of course, you can't make sure they're actually looking at it with you, but you can actually move through it rather than being on the phone with somebody and expecting that they are actually following paragraph three on page two or whatever. Yes, boss. We've got the time of going from appointment to a uh, uh, sign listing within one single appointment because uh, when there's multiple decision makers or they want somebody else's opinion, I've had uh, the person in Zoom and then the sign is joining from, from uh, out of state or from the same city, but traffic is a killer. You can get three Zoom appointments in three hours or one in-person appointment in three hours driving there back. Right. Yeah. So, so I hope online you were able to hear that, but Vaz says that you're able to tie in family that may not be in town that needs to help or be a part of that decision-making process. Now, title will probably laugh at me on this one, but uh, at one point earlier this year, uh, I had a scenario where there was an agent that had a co-signer that was grandpa. Grandpa was going to co-sign. <laughs> now, the agent had never met grandpa. And I'm like, get grandpa on a Zoom call because you need to see who this person is and actually acknowledge that they are really a part of this transaction. Now, is that, could it be fraudulent? Yes, it could be, right? We weren't actually checking his ID with who he was. Could they have gotten a neighbor that was, you know, a 70 year old guy to get on the video? Yes. But you could tell from their interactions that they knew one another. Um, and, and basically, I was just trying to let my agent know, you just need to verify that this is a real person. And they're not just having somebody slot in and sign something. In, in terms of um, uh, title, I'm going to try to change this so I can see my screen here. Good, good. I'm finally seeing some of you guys online. Sorry about that. I'm going to turn this over to Title here for just a second. I got two people from Title. Um, in terms of, do you guys use Zoom or do you just rely on the Ron system, but do you also use Zoom if you're talking to people? I have not used Zoom for talking to people other than interviewing. Okay. We don't use Zoom. We normally have um, 
verify our notaries that we trust that they're doing their job and verifying. Is that called the RON system? Do I have that right? Or you don't use that? Yeah, do wrong. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. That's fine. So for seller stuff, it would be wrong. For loan doctor stuff, loan doctor stuff. Wrong okay. is where a notary is using an okay. internet or a Zoom type meeting. Right. Understand. Yeah. Okay. So, but but for uh, us as agents, sorry, I do recommend you look at using and adding Zoom to your um, 2024 practices, uh, whether that's with a um, with your listing documentation or your your offer going over offers. So if you've had multiple offers with sellers to be able to bring up a spreadsheet and go over a spreadsheet with all of those offers, I've presented that before. Now, does anybody remember what I said? If you're doing multiple offers, what do you need to do with those actual offers? Does anybody remember here that if you were in that, that Monday mastermind? So you still have to deliver all those offers, okay? It's very important that every offer is delivered to your seller. What is an option to do that so that you don't have to email two, three, four, five, 15 offers? And yes, folks, we still have properties getting those, but any guesses? Spreadsheet doesn't give you the offer, gives you what you can show the, the what the offers detail. So a, a Google Doc, uh, a Google folder, excuse me. You can put them all into your Google Drive, create a folder, and then share that entire folder with your client so you're not emailing megabyte after megabyte after megabyte, right? You can share a folder. It's not being emailed. It's not taking up that bandwidth of your in and out box or their inbox, um, but they have access to all of that and they, they can go in and open and look at all of those documents. All right, let me get back to the business planning, which is the next section here. Uh, gotta shrink that down someplace. All right. So in uh, Realty One Group with Rock Title and all the stuff they provide, there are a couple of business plan options that are sitting out there. Oops, somebody's asked a chat question. Can I go back on your Zoom question before you go? Yes, you can. We're going to go back to Zoom. Hold on one second. So Zoom has the capacity to record. Yes, it does. Regarding the recording of a presentation. On a contract or a listing? I don't know that you need to do it. You don't record your meetings with people. I guess if you wanted to, you could. <laughs> the question is, what is my opinion on recording, presenting an offer or presenting a, a listing contract to a client? Um, you can do it. Uh, you will have to have a place to store it unless you're paying for storage with Zoom. It only allows you to record so many uh, on the online version before you have to move those over and they're not small. So you would have to have some plan to handle that. Uh, I guess, yes, it, it would be a, a good proof that you did actually present to somebody that information, uh, but I don't think you need to do it. So, yep. All right. So again, well, it probably depends on what you're doing in your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the question was whether that was good or bad, folks. <laughs> I think it also depends on, you may think you had a great presentation, but in the long run, you get sued, but they know the recording. Ah, Okay, so Craig is bringing up if if you think you have a good presentation, but down the road you get sued, they know you have a recording of it, and that actually could hurt you in the long run. I, I you know, I, I would probably recommend not recording. I would probably recommend not recording because yeah, it. Kind of where I'm trying to yeah. go with this. Because so without them having that information, they may record it, and then that may get them in trouble. It's kind of yeah i i think storage would be the bigger issue most people just don't have the bandwidth to store all those recordings um but yes i do think that that could be complicated if you do have a recording of something that you uh say misrepresented something and they would then have access to that recording and you're saying that so um, you're welcome thank you uh so business plan 
we talked about Rock University and that has a lot of tips and tools for you as an agent to use things to help in your everyday business from your SkySlope logging in with us to tools of setting up the website CRM. And, and we'll go back, if we have some time, we'll go back and look at some of the other tools that they have on there. But business planning, uh, it is very interesting. How many of you have done a business plan in the past? I've got a bunch of people here, sort of, sort of, okay. How many of you have done one for 2024? One person. And in looking a little confused, even with the hand up. Oh, I'm yeah, yes, yes, you've done your 2024 plan. All right. So for those of you wanting to do a business plan, and, and I let me step back from this. I, I have a hesitation for newer agents doing a business plan in the traditional sense, because it's very hard for a new agent to understand how many, say, calls or emails or touches need to be done in order for you to get that listing appointment or to get that sale. And, and when you do a business plan for real estate in the traditional method, you go backwards from the amount of money you want to make to the amount of commission per transaction, to the amount of communication you have in order to get a sale. And you go backwards in that method. Well, if you don't, if you've never made calls and you've never tried to meet with people over and over, you don't know how many of those touches you need. So I think oftentimes new agents get lost because they, they start from the top and go, I want to make, you know, let's just say six figures and try backing it up. And then they get to the first part of the step, which is, well, I have to make, you know, 150 calls a week. And, but they don't know, is it 150 calls? Is it 10 calls? Is it 50 calls? And so it makes it very challenging for new agents. However, I think there are some very valuable resources with business plans. There are two of them available to you immediately for 2024. You can go back to previous versions as well in our Rock University. Um, you can go to my learning. This one, um, actually, uh, folks here can't see the bottom of this. Hold on a second. I'm going to make, Alexandria, I'm going to make you disappear. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So new to the industry, if you go to that, you scroll down to the new to the industry, and then, let's see, you should be able to see new to the industry, number two says business planning, and there are four steps to this. There's an introduction video, a training video, audio, and then the business planning packet. This packet looks like this. Um, this is a 27 page packet. So don't be surprised. I'm not going to show you 27 pages. Don't worry. I'm not even sure if I have the second page on here. But what it's trying to get you to do is to establish your best practices, define your objectives for 2024 by looking at what you did in 2023. Right? Let's look back and see what worked. So we know what we're going to do in the future, because if something didn't work, do we want to repeat that for 2024? No. Kind of would be better if it, it didn't work either. Look to see why maybe it didn't work and change it. So, and then follow up strategies to achieve and fulfill your vision. And again, it's looking back at your expenses and then a strategy to move you forward. So um, you can also go to, whoops. Oh, this, how to create your uh, 2024 successful blueprint with Debbie DeGroat. I attended that session. It was a one hour um, presentation. I have not seen the video on that. I'm going to reach out to Justin to find out if we can get that video because I have not been able to see it. Usually they're posted. Um, I just don't know when it gets posted. This presentation provided um, a different uh blueprint and i think it was only about 12 pages uh and i'm bringing up some of the pages because i wanted you to see uh it, to me it was a very simplified system and i wanted you to see this um can i move this guy out of the way here sorry folks we on my little screen things get in the way and i can't see all right 
So I liked this because it gave you a very simple way to look at some of what had happened last year and what your goals are for this year. So very simple way to do a business plan, right? How many glo a gross closed commission income, how much income did you get last year? And what is your goal for this coming year? Pretty simple question. If you've been doing real estate for a while, you should be able to find that. Um, if you can't, I, I'm not going to open up personal records because this gets recorded. I figured that out the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. So uh, otherwise I can show you how in your zone, you can go look at what your summary of your co uh, closed commission income was. It's very easy to find that even before your... 1099 comes out, so you you can get that, right? How many deals did you close? And and for this, guys, I would not put your rentals or I would put your sales and then rentals in a separate one if you do a lot of rentals or if you do a lot of referrals. You can, you know, put a slash there, do sales, rentals, referrals. If that's a part of your business, if referrals is something you do a lot of, then it should be up there, but it should be separated, right? You need to know because referrals aren't going to pay you the same amount that you're paid on your actual production. But if referrals are a part of your system, you also need to know that's there because you need to be working on how to get more referrals. What are you doing to improve your referral system across the country, right? Days work. Now, I'm not sure. How many of you here could tell me how many days you worked last year? Or would you just tell me 365, <laughs> right? So I, I, the day's worked was kind of interesting. I think the idea is, are you working Monday through Friday? Are you working Tuesday through Sunday and taking Monday off? Are you balancing work life and, and how are you doing that? I think it's to get you to think about for yourself, do I need to make a change from last year? And how do I need to set up this year? If you have a team, do you do something where you make sure everybody has a day off? And that's as a team, you work together. Prospecting hours. How many hours each and every week are you doing for prospecting? What are you doing to get out there and build a new client base, right? If you're just sitting there waiting for your phone to ring, how does that work for you? Is that working? It's not working. Maybe you need to come tomorrow night to our call, <laughs> call event, uh, which starts at five o'clock, five o'clock tomorrow night here in Realty One Group. Uh, Vaz is going to give a presentation on how to make phone calls. Um, you can bring your own list, bring your sphere of influence, bring phone numbers and emails, make sure you come in with that. But I'm going to keep going down this. So as you're doing your prospecting hours, how are you setting that up? Are you doing it every day? Are you doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Are you doing it Tuesday, Thursday? What is your schedule? How many contacts did you make last year, right? Do you have that number? If you don't have that number, you're not tracking stuff. We know that, right? How many listing appointments did you go on? How many listings did you take? How many listings were sold? And then how many buyer sales? I would probably add, if referrals are a part of your business, how many referrals did you have, right? So that you could see that. And I almost would split out your prospecting hours. The nice thing about this is it allows you to break down your four quarters and month by month on perhaps what your production is. Here in Arizona, we do have seasonal mar a, seasonal, a seasonal market, right? We know typically the time of year we're in right now, November, December is our slower month. OK, things have been picking up. Interest rates just dropped. I expect January will be a lot busier. And certainly by the middle of uh, by the middle of February, I think we'll see a lot more activity. Uh, we're in the last two weeks of the month, which means if people have not already bought, a lot of them are on hold right now as they're kind of winding up the year and getting ready for next year. Doesn't mean they're not out there, but just uh, I think some things are slowing down right now. But this allows you, this little plan allows you to do that projection by month. And then, see, there's another page I think I pulled up. How many of you have ever seen this type of 10, 10, 10 daily tracking form? Boz, have you seen this? Okay, so he has. Anybody else? Anybody use this type of form? No? So 
the idea is, and I can't see that top thing. Let's see if I can move this little guy out of the way again. Okay, says your goal should be to complete 10 phone calls or face-to-face -face conversations, 10 texts and 10 emails to generate business each day. Use the worksheet to track your results on a weekly basis, okay? For those that need some structure, this is a great form to take and use on a daily basis to try and do that. Now, if you have never done this before, unless you're going to go work with Foz, which is great, but if you're not going to do that and you don't have somebody to, to keep you on track, I recommend starting with 555, okay? Because what happens often is people start this type of thing and they get overwhelmed and they won't continue. They'll go two days and be done. So um, before you do that, start a little smaller and try to set yourself up to do this for a full month. If you can do this for a full month, you will have set the pattern in that you will be doing this day after day after day. Um, now, this does include Saturday and Sunday. I would say, obviously, block out one or two of those days if you are not going to do it on a couple of days. If you're doing open houses on Saturday and Sunday, maybe those days are cut out from there. Or you use those as your 10 touches because you're having those one-on-one -on -one conversations directly at an open house, then cross out another day. But make sure you have consistency there. Uh, to be able to do that. And you'll see it says days work down here. It's not intended that you're doing this seven days a week, just so you understand. It's intended that you have the calendar to be able to fill in the days you're going to do. Um, I don't think you're going to do it seven days a week. You need to set that schedule, okay? But it gives you the chance each week to figure out what were the contacts made, what were the listing appointments, uh, listings or buyer sales, et cetera. And you can see that in there. Uh, again, this this is actually available on the Debbie DeGroat uh, call. I have to find out from Rock Title where that video is and if we can get access to it for you. It was a one hour presentation, um, pretty oops, simple presentation for you to work on. And they also gave you, we were talking about this earlier, a marketing plan. So she gave you a couple of things with an idea of marketing plan in terms of how you're going to interact with people, right? Are you going to get on the phone, teleprospecting, right? Are you going to make phone calls, direct mail, personal referrals, event marketing or consumer seminars? Are you going to go out to something where you're reaching out to people directly? There are a whole lot of different things here. Uh, you were talking about uh, for sale by owners, expires, geographical farming. Those are also options for you. It says, please rate from one to five, being five, the highest level of your importance for you, right? For what you would like to give more attention. It's not recommending you do 21 of these things. It's recommended you look at five of these to tackle for 2024. And the idea is if you have so many different things, you're not going to come back and repeat and do those over and over. So can somebody share with me something that has been very successful, whether it was last year or in the past, that you would re you plan to do again in 2024? Oh, we'll get more referrals. <laughs> referrals, okay. Yeah, that's the ultimate. All right. Uh, person to person. The person to person is gold. Nothing beats person to person. No marketing campaign, like person to person. If you can afford a booth, at events, you go usually, uh, you don't have to, that's a luxury. Like, sure. But assist to the event and just make conversations. In our team, we practice this several times where we just go to the malls and we just go where people is. And the, the agents go out there and, and they're going to have conversations and build relationships. So that literally generates one of those. It's equivalent to probably like a whole week's of work on the Going to a booth and doing that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Or in person, just assisting and, and networking. What, what about open houses? The open houses is the best way to bring them to you. As long as you're not just sitting there, putting a sign outside and expecting people to walk in. Yeah. 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 We, we do two things in open houses. We maximize our time there, which we take our laptops and we start calling while we're in open house and maybe there's no clients coming. 
and we go door knocking to all the neighbors, inviting them over and maximize the attendance on, on the open house. How many houses do you hit before one of your open houses? 45. 45 homes. So obviously if you're doing this yourself, it makes it really hard to hit 45 homes. They've got a team of people doing that. It's usually two or three, two or three people walking those doors. Now, if you're doing it yourself, you can go the day before. Go the day before, put put door hangers. Um, we have a form uh, designs in the creative studio to do a door hanger, or you can buy the plastic sleeve and put a flyer in it to leave something on a door. You can do postcards, which are a little easier to, to put at a door if you're not going to do the door hanger. So those are options to help get you started. Uh, and, and those are great ways to get in front of people. So let's see. So here's again, marketing plan continued. I like just how simple this is. It gives you, I will engage homeowners via, right? And this is, they've just selected some of these. Obviously you could change those up from the other list. You move them around and decide different things you're gonna use. And then it says the next step, how often are you doing this, right? How often are you doing these different steps? So it will help get you started for next year. And I'm gonna back up here and ask some questions. Let's see if I can... I'm going to escape from that screen. So, Dan, yep, yep. Um, in general, what said about the uh, walking the neighborhood and stuff, I'm sure you're aware of the education I where just know we can do postcards too. We yes. We can do hangers as well. So, yeah. yep, that's actually what I was going to go back to is. Hopefully you guys are still seeing my screen online. That is actually what I was going to go to is um, not only does Rock Title and and that was Art in uh, Art is one of our escrow officers with Rock Title here. I'll go back this way. We've got Art and Roberta over here. Say hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> People online are waiting to you. <laughs> um, so on our Rock University, if you are not aware, there are postcard templates here, but we really recommend that you reach out to Melinda, who's not here, but she is their marketing rep and can help set up those postcards. In addition, you have access to social media posts. If you are doing any social media, here are some of the December posts. You move these into your um into your Canva, you can use a free Canva. They're already designed for you. Let me move this up just a little bit. You change out basically your name down here and put, you know, realtor. Uh, and then you can send these out. Here's like a happy holidays. Guys, these are already prepared for you. This one, you do need to go in and edit those X's. You got to put in the data. Right, you got to put in where are there these events, um, but it's just giving you an idea. This is a template. Just basically, this is promoting yourself, right? Buying or selling a home, I can help. This is a, a rock title executive, but you put your face there and say, you know, Melissa Schwartz Realtor, uh, and then with Realty One Group, and you're going to put your contact information. So you can change these things around very easily and get them out there. You have two more weeks. Which of these do you want to use in the next two weeks? They're very easy to edit, okay? Oh, I love that one, right? Cocoa Hot cocoa and contracts, right? Let's do a contract, right? So there are a lot of fun things that are out here and you would, this when you open this up, you would actually change and put your Realty One group, right? So obviously the snowy one may not be for us <laughs> unless you want to add on there, you know, wishing we were seeing snow or something, but you can have, yeah, yeah. Aren't you glad you're not here, right? <laughs> Warm and sunny in Arizona, right? There, you're involved in a toy drive, right? You can always do this and put your info on there. So there's a ton of stuff available to you. I've just, I think I've shovel and okay. salt. What was that? Shovel and salt the driveway. Where is that? Oh yeah. Okay, that is not needed for Arizona. Put a big ha 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 or ho ho ho. Maybe Flagstaff. <laughs> Prescott, maybe. So, yeah, so, it, you know, obviously there are a ton of different things available here. If you're not aware of all those things, there's also a newsletter. Uh, you're given usually two months at a time. We'll see January should pop up here in the next, usually about four days. 
So this is a two page newsletter you can edit. You do often need to put in the market updates. How many of you know you have access to the market updates here on the Rock Title website? Do you know that? So on this website, you can go down here. I'm going to scroll down slowly so I'm not making people nauseous at home here. <laughs> so if you go down here, you have the Altos Market Report. If you guys have not played with this, I highly recommend it. You can have it set up to be sent to you. Melinda can set that up to be sent to you every month uh, personally. But this comes in every month. Right now it comes in with Maricopa County, but you can set it up for a specific zip code if you wanted to only look at a zip code. But this is a really cool tool to work with your clients, especially your sellers that want to tell you they know everything about the market, right? Here are the numbers, folks. This is Maricopa County. Look, it has actually not changed very much, but let's put in here, let's just do 85254. We all know that is the magic zip code in Scottsdale, right? It's actually Phoenix. But, oh, it's a little bit of change there, not much. I was trying to see one with more change. But let me go down here just to give you an idea. So this is showing medium list price. You actually can change stuff. So let's see the change on average days on market, right? So we're we're actually coming down, right? So at the height of when it was slowing down, we were up here at 75 days and we're now sitting uh, 68 days right in that area, right? So it's coming down a little bit. Things are moving faster. Now, there is not as much inventory, there's not as much activity, but it still is moving a little fast. Now, a few, these are the seven day averages, right? And there was a seven day average that all of a sudden was only 57 days on the market. So it does bounce around. That's why they give you both of those, but you can also watch your price per square foot or your um, uh, price decreases, which is interesting. Inventory, right? So we all talk about inventory. Let me scroll this back up a little bit. So at the lowest in the recent months, right? In 2023, the lowest uh, was, we'll do a 90 day average of 101 and we're back up to about 138 in this zip code, right? Just the zip code. So anybody got an idea of a more volatile, volatile? Let's try 85032. Let's see if that's going to give any other change here, trying to show you where some of this is. So here's a little more, more of a movement. So it went from a seller's market a little bit higher here, more towards the buyer's market in the last month. Okay. So let's look at this inventory. Wow. So this was back in November of 22. We had inventory of about 139. So we actually really low inventory, which is what we anticipated, but guess it's coming up a little bit here. Okay. And this started September. So October, November, December, we've added a little, it hasn't spiked as much as we thought. Right. So, and if we look at days on market, it's coming down right? Average days on market are coming down. So you can play that with this and you can play with this with your sellers, right? If you're taking a listing, you can actually look at what's going on in that zip code. Now, some zip codes are very large, so do be aware of that, but at least you can focus around on the general area of a property, okay? So if you are not aware that that was there, I highly recommend that. You can send that to your clients so they get it all the time. We also have access to buyer seller guides. Uh, they can email those to you or you can print them out. They're not recommending you print them with as many changes that are still set to come with the, the contract yet. They have Spanish buyer seller guides now too. Okay, so they do have buyer uh, and seller guides in Spanish. Thank you. For those that are doing Spanish, uh, working with Spanish buyers, uh, please note AAR Online has the contract all the contract forms in Spanish. However, you cannot use it for the transaction uh, because there are too many people in the process, I'm assuming, that are English-speaking individuals and it has to be recorded in English. 
Um, but you can use that as a reference tool to give your clients a version in Spanish. Again, that is on aaronline.com. That's Arizona Association of Realtors website. So let me just jump here because I've got a few minutes left. Let me make sure everybody online, does anybody online have any questions? Because I cannot see your questions. How can I get back to that? Hang on there. Where'd it go? <laughs> there we go. Anybody has have any questions? I've got eight people online. Wow, a lot of people are there. I can't even see you all. Um, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. I'll open up the chat so I can see it. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, and then I will go back to our final slides for our meeting today. Any questions online? I hope some of you are here for the whole thing. If not, this is being recorded. And um, I sure hope I recorded that. I hope I put it back to record. <laughs> that would be really sad if I didn't. That was a good I know it was such a great presentation and how many bets I did not press that. I'll start over. No. It, it's also on Facebook. So I do have it both places. We can put it onto our, onto our YouTube if we have to. No questions. You guys are being quiet online. Alex, put a chat in there. Oh, okay. How to find the Canva templates. Oh, all of those are in, hold on a second. Let me go back to the screen. So the so all of these are Canva templates. This is in Rock University. Let me go back to one U, or I'm sorry, to one login. In your one login, there is something called, <laughs> I can't get there, Rock University right here. You can click on the Rock University. It's going to open up back to the same thing. You need to become a member. And then when you log in, you get to this screen. All the folks on here are like laughing because I've got stuff all over the screen. Okay, you go to the top of this when you are log into the VIP All Access. And here you have your social media posts. You also have media stories, which you can use for um, I believe for your reels and things like that, it gives you templates that it, they're configured to a different um, dimension. And I believe that, see, they're longer. I believe they're for uh, your reels and setting up some of that stuff. Um, so those are all there. Email those worksheets for stats. Oh, with everything. Uh, I can email you that, presenta that um, presentation. I do recommend we find that video so you can see the vi video by Debbie DeGroat. Um, I will find out from, um, from Justin how we're going to have access to the Debbie DeGroat video. But yes, I do have that and I can share that with you. If anybody would like that, if they could email me directly at melissa.schwartz at realtyonegroup.com. I will go ahead and get you that one. Uh, that's the shorter one. The other one there, the other one is available on the um, one university right now. So I just don't know where this one is. So any other questions? All right, let me go back to my final slide. Which, oops. <laughs> It's fun with a small screen, isn't it, folks? Everybody's going, eh, it's really hard. Anything else from the people here would like to share? Yes. So, yes. I, I you know, did the CRM. I brought everything over a long time ago. Right. And I tried to set up the drip camp, uh, campaign maybe 10 different times. And everything looks like it's right. And I included my name on there. I've never received anything. I don't think it's working. And I'm not sure why. It's very frustrating. Send something to Justin at rocktitle.com. Is that his? Is it? I, I Okay, justin.taylor at rocktitle.com. Um, and have him take a peek at it. Uh, any other questions? Anything from you guys? I see I can't see you guys. So I can see where my camera is going. Anything from... Title, ready for the holidays? Ready for the holidays. Ready for the holidays to be over. <laughs> <laughs> for them to be over already. I did want to touch on, you mentioned uh, Ron Notary, and I did want to explain for those of you that is your answer for your client that's not able to 
come to the office to meet with a notary, the client has to have a video camera. They have to have a camera on their computer and they have to have the most recent updated program uh, in order to do that. And then the notary, the raw notary is going to send a link that has soft credit questions. So uh, they're going to ask things about which home is connected to you, which home address is connected to you, names of family members, things like that. So if your client's not able to, to facilitate any one of those things, they're not going to be able to do a raw notary. And if they can't answer the questions in a timely manner, it drops the, the notary. It, there is a charge and they have to do it again. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So Ron is not always the answer. Right. Well, and, and again, folks, if any of you are getting those lovely emails that are saying somebody has land or a home to sell and you are the agent they have selected, uh, and you know, you are not the top listing agent in this office. My guess is ask a lot of questions. Cause I'm going to bet it's a it's a fraudulent deal because I'm like, why did you choose me? Right. I'm like, of all the agents I know, how did I get chosen? Right. I always love those. Uh, we picked your name out of 70,000 agents in the state of Arizona. Like, gosh, that's interesting. Thank you. But no, I don't think so. And always Google search that. Yes. If you get someone that says they're the seller, Google search, get some information from them, make sure it matches. Yeah. Check the county taxes, verify. Sure. Ex exactly. All right. Well, um, just to remind everybody, we have two events this week. We're very excited. Tomorrow night, we are doing our first and hopefully not our last, our first calling night, trying to help you get a jump start on 2024. Uh, we will be here at five o'clock. I'm going to have a uh, pizza and salad. Uh, but first, you're going to get a training session with Vaz in terms of how to make those phone calls. If you would uh, if bring your own names, you you are not being required to sign up with Vaz's list. Uh, if you want to use his names, he will explain that in his training session. That's up to you. But seriously, folks, if you've not been calling your own list, you can start there. The idea is to get into the habit and understand how best, some best practices to do that. And then on Wednesday night, we have an ornament exchange. You are all invited to bring an ornament, have some fun. We're going to have a little bite of food and uh, some wine uh, and just relax and enjoy kind of our final get together for the year. And uh, so let's see, what did I end here with? Uh, we'll get to the next page here eventually. <laughs> Who will you be in 2024? To remind everybody you do matter and show your value. I think if any three words are going to be the symbol for 2024 for realtors, it is going to be show your value to each and every one you meet. Happy holidays. Enjoy. We hope to see you either tomorrow or Wednesday night. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, look, and I was recording. <laughs>